What's up guys, welcome back. In today's video, we're getting the 924S up on the lift and I think we're pulling the rear end out of it. If you saw the last episode, I just went out to Blairsville, Georgia to 944 Barn to pick up uh, some early 944 rear end components. Basically the entire rear end. We've got trailing arms, stub axles, spring plates, and axles themselves are in that trash bag. We are going narrow track width and steel trailing arms. So today's video is going to entail getting the rear end out of the 924S. This is all basically in the endeavor to back the car and have it still handle well. All right, so step number one, cut the wheels off. But step number one is your e-brake handle is on the left-hand side of the driver. And just inside the carpet is the adjuster for the e-brake cable. That's where the e-brake cable passes out. So I'll end up pulling that straight out and that will keep me from having to basically unhook all the e-brake cable stuff. Cause that the whole torsion tube and everything is coming down. There's all of this, this end cap, spring plate cap, um, trailing arms. I'm gonna unhook the shocks, axles are coming out. All that's coming down. So thanks to Elliot, when we lowered Kayla's car, um, I knew that this was the, basically the start point. All right, so I decided to take the driver's seat out uh, to get better leverage and more access to the threaded end of the e-brake cable, which threads through this cage with a swivel on it, which tightens uh, up the cable slack. And that cage right here attaches to your e-brake handle. Got the end of the cable uh, threaded out, got the spring off, and got the jam nut. Off. So those had to come off in order for the cable end, the threaded cable end, to pass through the housing to then come out the bottom side of the car, like so. There we are. All right, guys, axles are out, shocks are out, driver's seat's out, obviously, exhaust is out, and brake lines are separated. There, and there. So I've just finished cleaning up the floor, and I think all we got left now are just the bolts holding the whole like rear suspension setup in, the torsion bar, torsion tube, I should say. So we gotta take this guy out, we gotta take this guy out, and we gotta take these guys out. There's a big bolt right there. Um, would love to strip these down and get them painted. Um, if I have to, I'll do it in the car. For now, I'm kind of in a rush to take all my measurements to make sure I can get what I need to bag the car in the next week because the bag riders guys are driving here from Vermont for Riverside next weekend and they leave on Wednesday. And today is Wednesday, the previous week. All right guys, so you'll see I've got the car back down close to the ground and I got the last bolts out. This one's technically a nut. You can see here that this doesn't pass all the way through. This just sits up over this stud. And so this doesn't have to come out over that stud. It just goes up and basically fits over the stud and then that block washer holds it in. From here, you basically have to pry the thing out. Uh, the bushings up front are in there pretty snug. Gotta get in there with a pry bar. The jacks are basically there to keep it from falling all the way to the ground. It's only a foot off the floor, but don't want it crashing down, so. I think we're free.
it is out. And all we have left is the torque tube and the transmission. That's going to do it for tonight. And uh, tomorrow I'll start disassembling it. All right, guys, next morning, got the 700 back outside because thankfully the sun is out. Time is of the essence right now. I need to know if we can bag this car or if I'm going coilovers. And the bag riders, guys, <laughs> there's been a triangle, like a Bermuda Triangle phone call system going on here where it's been talking to Zach at Bag Riders, talking to Elliot 944 Barn. And we've been like trying to figure out what I can lose, what I need to keep, and what bag riders can provide as far as good components for bagging this car. Now, some of you may already be thinking about this. Elliot and I have already talked about doing a rear sway bar in this since this torsion tube has the mounts for it. There and there. So regardless if it goes coilovers or air, we're gonna do a rear sway bar. I think we're really gonna capture the ride quality we're gonna want and handling that we're gonna want uh, going air with a rear sway bar. So Elliot's gonna be here for Riverside next week. So he's gonna bring a sway bar, end links, hardware. So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna get everything taken apart. We're gonna pull the torsion bars out and then I'll get the steel arms and spring plates on and we'll get it right back in the car. Uh, it'll be a handful, but luckily from there, all I have to do, once everything's back in the car, I can take the trailing arms off individually to do all the maintenance. This part will be irrelevant, but what I'm gonna do now is locate my spring plate in its stock position on the torsion rod, on the torsion bar, against that mount. And if you've static lowered these cars or even lowered a Volkswagen Beetle before, you'll know what this is doing. So basically, if you're gonna static lower these cars, you can basically pull your spring plate off and re-index it on the splines of the torsion rod to immediately lower the car, to just re-index everything up higher. And to do that, you wanna mark where it is stock so when you pull it off, you know that you're going back in one or two splines lowering it. So even though this might be irrelevant, I'm gonna do this just in case this all goes back to stock. I'll know where my stock setting was. So there's the stock setting there. And that's after I took the bolts of the end cap off to relieve a little bit of pressure because that's the way it'll go back in is without that pressure. So what you're seeing here is the spring plate, end cap and spring plate, pulling out with the torsion bar. Now there's splines inside here. The inside of the torsion bar has splines as well and they, they index in a receiver on the inside of the torsion tube. So if you were going to just lower the car, you'd find your spline, you'd find where stock was, and then you'd re-index one or two teeth up and that would literally be a three to four inch drop in the rear going two splines up. And it would reassemble and you'd have a three to four inch drop in the rear like that. But even if we go to coilovers, if bagging this car doesn't work out, we're taking this torsion bar out altogether. And then we'll put the early spring plate on, then the bracket, which technically acts as the end cap on so there's nothing in there now. And where the shock mounts, there'll be a coilover or an airbag, and that's what now keeps the car up. So this can be used as added uh, spring, basically, but I'm not gonna deal with that at all. So we're basically gonna reassemble with the early spring plate. All right guys, so here you can see the difference in the spring plates between the early 944 and the late 944. Uh, the two rear mounts that bolt to the trailing arm, you can tell that those are a little closer together than the late 944.
All right, guys, rear end is put together with the early steel trailing arms and spring plates. Gonna get the Porsche down now and try to finagle this thing in. We'll get it up in the air, we'll put axles in it, and we'll start test fitting wheels. All right, guys, well, the rear end is in the 924. Elliot said it was the hardest part of the whole deal trying to get that thing in, and he wasn't kidding. But all I have to do now is get the short axles in, uh, because those, if you remember, also have to uh, be a part of this whole rear end swap. So you'll see here, as you may have seen in the last episode, the difference in lengths on the axles. These are late track width because the later model 944 track width is much wider, uh, which means it needs a longer axle. And this track width is much more narrow. And that's the difference in axles. So we've test fit a wheel on the back and found the formula. This is exactly what I was hoping for with the rear end uh, for an air suspension aired out fitment. I didn't want to poke the wheel too hard. I didn't want it to make it look ridiculous when it's aired up or you know at a low driving height or anything like that. And this is literally flush, like perfectly flush. Now this is one of Kayla's rear RSs. This is a 16 by nine with a pretty high offset, but a deep lip. This is a three inch lip. And it fits perfect without the factory free-floating spacer. So now the goal is, is to get my RSs built to a similar spec. And it might be more doable with that free-floating spacer on. These here are half-inch lips, I think. I've got some two-inch um, step lips here that need to be refinished that I can use for testing purposes. What I've done that I haven't filmed yet is I got the front spring out in the front strut assembly. So I've got the front spring out and the whole assembly back in to see how much travel I have with just the stock shock. And I'm about to do the same on the driver's side and then test fit some wheels up front as well. So we're real close. This episode, I wanted to at least get the rear end swapped. So I'm stoked that that's in. I've pulled some measurements. I've been on the line with Zach from Bag Riders. We've got a couple ideas to where I might be able to get a dual bellow bag uh, airlift builder kit in there. So eyelet to eyelet, just as if you were going to do a full coilover conversion on one of these cars and do just what we did in this episode where you'd remove the torsion bars themselves. You'd mount the coilover right where the shock is in the car. And so my goal is to be able to use that eyelet to eyelet and use the airlift builder series to put a dual bellow bag in that exact spot. That's it for this episode, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Next episode, Tearing down my RS's, trying to build out a set that will fit this car just the way I want it to. Getting the front all taken apart and getting wheels test fit up front too with the range of motion I need. And hopefully having stuff from Bag Riders on its way to then start installation or trying to figure out what we need to build for air suspension in the 924S. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you in the next episode.